morning. Happy last day of harvest, we hope. Assuming nothing breaks and the wheels don't fall off this entire operation, this should be the last day. Oh, we got dust everywhere. This morning I'm going to take the load of beans that we loaded to town. We have enough space in the bed for one truck. I need two trucks to finish bean harvest, so I'm going to take that one to town while the dew's burning off. I'm going to combine a truck for myself today. Dad, BJ, and Brad are going to go do corn harvest with the ideal combine, so we'll throw one of them a camera and get some ideal footage. <laughs> ideal footage. And, uh, Basically, I will dump the one truck once I get it loaded and then come back and finish bean harvest with the other one. If we have to leave it loaded, we have to leave it loaded. This is Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving. Cargo will be closed till next Monday, but you know, once we get done, I don't care if we do anything till next Monday. Those trucks can sit loaded for a few days. So we're going to start off, me and Dad are going to go after that ideal. It is in the cornfield that we ran last with it. I uh, didn't get to run up much that day because of trucking needs, but Dad's going to run about 30, I think there's 37 acres in that last farm. He's going to run it with it. So we're going to go get it and move it. I hope this ain't a bad omen, but we're starting to off with a flat tire. And it's off the beads, so we need a jack. Get it on the beads, so I'd bring it over here to the bead blaster. Fire in the hole! Power ladder! Now anytime we have an idea, everyone always tells me about Mike Mitchell. I consider Mike a buddy. I talk to Mike from time to time. I'm well aware of the issues he's had with his ideals and that he doesn't have them anymore and they got replaced with X9s. But uh, So far we've been really impressed with this uh, Ideal 7. We'll probably do a um, review of this thing if uh, they don't take it immediately. We've only got about, uh, I'd say we've probably done 150 acres with it actually. So a decent review but we've only done corn with it i've never ran beans with an ideal combine and i hear that they are bean eating machines well today's hopefully the day we've been looking for for a while try to get done here with corn we got 30 acres over here to do ryan finish up the double crops so we're going to use the fent ideal here seven to finish up Ours is all switched beans, but into a beans. So, so we're going to use this one, finish up hopefully. Cross the road over there. Okay, let's finally get in the gleaner. I've got to put some fuel in this thing. My fuel light was starting to flash on last night when we quit, so definitely don't have enough to run for a few hours. Probably won't quite fill it all the way up though. Probably just put enough to finish. Thanksgiving day, partly cloudy in the afternoon. Highs in the upper 50s. Southeast winds around five miles an hour. So on top of fuel, I also need def. Only problem is our def tank's in that building and I can't get to it with the head on. I'm hoping the def tank on the Thunder Chicken, it's got a little bit in it, I can reach it with it. Got a 35 foot hose reel, so I think we'll be good. If not, we're gonna risk it for the biscuit because I ain't unhooking the head. Yesterday when I filled this thing up, I thought it was full. Turns out it was just air locking and it's half full. Wonderful. And that'll do. Alright, here we go. Let's see what happens. So we got a six acre field, a 28 acre field, and then we got the rest of that 27 acres we were in which should only be about five acres. Starting on this 26 acres. Now, it is just a little after 12 o'clock. 
see how it's still shady over there? There's still frost over there. The beans were about a point and a half wetter. I'm going to dump one truck in our grain bins. The other one's going to town. I don't want to put 15% beans on top of our bean bin. So right here, we're 13%. That's where we need to be. So we will save that for later. It'll dry out a little bit and it'll go to town. We'll blend it in with some dry grain. They won't even notice and it'll be perfect. Real good beans, real good double crops. So that brings me to how did we like the horse? So I was really skeptical of these double crops. I thought the horse did an awful job planting them. Now that I'm in them, the stand is great. There's a couple things that I could have adjusted that now that I know would have made this stand absolutely perfect, I believe. Uh, the ground was as hard as it could possibly be. No rain for like three weeks, 90 degree temperatures, gravelly ground, very hard dirt. And we have some really good double crop beans. I mean, 50 bushel double crops on a year, we get a frost about two weeks early. I think that's phenomenal. So yeah, I like the avatar. No grain cart today. Just have to make do. Where dad's running, which is what's on pipe ag right now, they have to use the grain cart to cart out of this field. It's down in a valley. So we are cartless. So with everybody running around doing multiple things and BJ not being able to leave the field and Brad trucking, no one got lunch today. It's 12.50, I'm hungry. Luckily, there was a wag bar in this thing, in the, in the cubby hole. Didn't realize that was there, but. If you guys are interested in wag bars, they are good, they are filling. This will maintain life till I can find lunch. There's a link in our description that will get you guys a discount. So check those out, make a great holiday gift, or uh, just check them out. Maybe they have a Black Friday sale, I really don't know, but uh, I like these things, so check them out. Let me know what you think. If you've bought them through that link, let me know in the comments what you think of them. Hot and Spicy is my personal fave. Uh, my kids, they like the teriyaki. I don't know. Let me know what your faves are. Well, we've got uh, two fields done here, three, four fields over here in this 30 to 4 5 acre, whatever it is. This 15 acre field got it done. One is up on the hill. It really pretty good corn. It's a lot of 200 bushel corn just around that first round, one bunch. So we go out a field up on the hill, the other hill. Here we go, go round and up. 13 acres up there, then down over the hill behind that. There's like a three acre patch. And I wind it up. I know this thing needs a spinner on it. Damn, my arm wore out some. These close quarters and just uh, turn, turn, turn. They need to put spinner on this thing as an option or something. Standard's what they need it on. Like our uh, post up, like the cloth has it on there, built into the steering wheel. Makes it nice. We put one on, Brian put one on the cleaner, so uh, it makes a big difference. Basically, these tight patches, these little patches here, a lot of turning. So, we'll get up here, I think, little trees down or anything, we can uh, just wide. I made it like 40 feet so I get the head up there with the creeper head. If I grow it up, we'll come over and bulldozer the uh, little backhoe trim it, clean it up, make it a little wider, mow it, he can mow it for sure. This thing's got a, right there if you can see it, when it goes up a hill or grade, it turns yellow, then if it gets real steep, it turns red. I don't know what that means, but I'm telling you you're on a grade, I guess. So we'll get this field up here. It's a, I have a crook on the so there's a lot of turning. Well, we're 26 acres in. There's only 10 acres left. 10-ish acres left. The truck's full. Let's go dump the truck, find some lunch, come back and knock this out. I'd like to get that truck into Cargill today, get it dumped. That way Dad can have it for corn if he needs it, because I doubt we're going to get all the corn trucks to Cargill today. They're just going to have to remain loaded. Off we go. We're splitting a little bit. We need to open our concaves. Just climbed up, we got plenty of space up there. Good news. Now we go dig through the freezer to see what we can find for lunch. Oh yeah, we're having lasagna. All right, let's go finish it. 
Maybe we can get over here in time to hop in the ideal a little bit. I don't know. Probably not. Lows in the lower 30s. Tuesday, partly cloudy in the morning, then becoming mostly cloudy. Highs in the lower 50s. Well, we got moved up on the hill, got one running around. And sure the boat. They got half inch bolt drives that whole left, right, each side. Six rows. Yeah, I want to thank uh, High Ag for uh, bringing this combine down, letting us use it. When the cleaner was down, we used it a little bit. And then it's been sitting here in case we broke down again. But I think we got the cleaner to fix that transmission. I think fixed that problem. We hope. So they said go ahead and use this a little bit more if we wanted to. So we thought we'd do this corn. So I'd like to thank High Ag equipment for everything it's done for us so far this year. Caps us going. Hard beat, good service. You know, this good corn up here. You know, 220, 30 bushel corn. After you get it open, it's good corn. But uh, this combine drinks a lot more fuel than what the gleaner does. It's got a lot of weight to pull, and it, it needs a little more power. I think it's 25 horse more than the gleaner. Maybe more, I don't know. Most I've seen, I don't know how accurate this real thing is, but I think it's fairly accurate according to the dumps from the combine. Crane cart. I've had it up to like 20. 1.9 gallon most of the time, about 22 gallon when you really get pushing, and that's uh, the highest I've seen. So I think it's 30, 600, 3700 bushel an hour, and it's uh, it's pretty put great the fuel compared to later. You get pushing later like that, you're running about 13 to 15 gallon. So it's a big savings, and it's because one reason I'd say because the weight. This thing's a lot heavier than later, and I think that chop of corn head's taking some power too because I can really tell when I engaged the head it really uh, acts like it really pulls so I didn't think that chopping head would make that much difference but I think it does as far as power wise so anyway it's a uh, nice the same cab as cleaner controls are just same controls but they're all they're, all the buttons are different different places the monitor's a little different everything's a little different in it all these are the same but these button down here is the same looking but there's <laughs> these are up here and vice versa they're all different places from what the cleaner is so I don't know why they do that, but they do. Outside of that, everything else is pretty well the same. Cab platform out there, everything. Nice cab. This machine's kind of noisy compared uh, to the 8 ideal, the bigger ideals. I don't know why it's single rotor. I don't know if that does something that makes a difference. What? It is noisy. Unless there's something wrong that they don't know about, some insulation messing or something. And then we got the pin back in. So. I think we're ready. down to an acre and a half. Just about done this field. Got a little patch over the hill there and we have it. Good corn. Hope you can hear me there. You can hear how uh, the noise this thing is. It rumbles. It rattles sometimes. Look, Brian, uh, I see some dust down there. He might be done. He's down in there over the hill. Cross grammar down on the highway. See how close this thing is to the. It don't. It ain't very high. Of course, this this is our cart. A little bit higher than the other one. But it's uh, that's that's one bad thing about this combine. The spout's not high enough. I guess next year's we'll make a change in them. I don't know. Definitely high enough. Big carts. Footprints. That's because it's my footrest. See if we can't plug it. Full speed. Bam! We're done. That was easy. Yeah. And that's the end. Looks like Dad and BJ are still going though, so I'm gonna dump this and then we'll go over and see if they need any help. And uh, see if we can't wrap this thing up here real quick. So cousin Ben was riding with me. We were combine right beside his house. So. Have a little bit of company on them last few acres, but we are done now. Like I said, we're going to head over to the corn field and see if uh, they're done, if they need a truck moved or anything. And that's it. We're going to go enjoy some Thanksgiving tomorrow and not have any stress. And that's going to be awesome. All in all, the double crops were probably 10 bushel, 15 bushel better than we thought. Like I said, with that frost, and I just, I didn't think the stand looked all that great. And the 10 inch beans, I was really figuring on uh, 30 bushel double crops. And looks like 
most of them were in that 45 range, so very happy. Hey, you may be wondering how we budget for double crops or what even double crops are. So this was a winter wheat field that we combined in June and then I immediately planted beans in it and that's why we call those double crops. It's the second crop out of this field this year. We never figure double crops in our balance sheets. We always look at those as a bonus because you never know what you're going to get with them. Now a 45 bushel per acre bonus is pretty handy but there's been years where we've combined double crops and we barely paid for the seed that went in them. Not for a while. It's been probably 15 years since I've seen that. We've been very blessed lately, but I've I've been with Dad combining and eight bushel double crops before, and that's no fun. You're really just kind of mowing the field at that point. But uh, yeah, that's how we that's, that's how we look at double crops, just kind of a bonus. See ya. Power ladder. Last one of the year, folks. Last few. Let's see where I'm going here. Don't get too far over there, over the edge. I forget what they call this weed. This whatever it is, it's a moss, it ain't a weed, moss, whatever. It just takes over. I gotta get the dozer over here and do some work on this road. I know that. This is the last little patch of 2022 corn. Not very good usually, but it don't look too bad. Of course, first round, you ain't gonna have nothing. But don't look too bad down back a couple times, that's it. Get a bid for or not. Hey, I don't want to Come on. Ho, oh, oh, there we go. Whew. Boy, I'm getting used to this thing. Now, it, it revs up a little bit to engage the separator. Then it'll idle back down. Now it's engaged, then idle back down, then I'll turn the head on. The radar on. Just talked to dad, he's on the last two acres. So it's all over. It's all over now with the crying. Even if the combine breaks down, it's still over. I have a deer plot. Nah, not really. We'd probably swap a combine over and go grab him, but that ain't gonna happen. And he's gonna finish up. Really hoping to get some footage of that ideal running before they got finished, but they only have an acre left. And they are kind of in a place that's not really accessible by pickup truck. So we're gonna try to do a little shortcut. Don't mind us, we're just cruising through a double crop field. It's really rough. Dad's right on the other side of that railroad right there. So yeah, we're gonna hop over there and see him run. I think we can get around up here. We might have to do some bushwhacking. We'll make it about as far as the truck's gonna go though. Man, I thought there was a full other path over here, but maybe not. Trespassers haven't been doing their jobs. Yeah, the deer made a path. Huh. One of my buddy's self cams. Should we moon it? I bet he wasn't expecting to see me pop out of the woods. Bonus round. Oh, one row there. Eh, we'll get one row. We'll get over there, Brian, where he comes from.
if we get back up the hill here now, we be okay. That ain't had but four wheel drive. I'm gonna move a few things around here. I'm gonna put this truck up. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, I believe. This truck has a slight tear in the tarp, and there's about five or six thousand dollars for the soybeans in here, and we don't want those to get wet. So I'm gonna go take this and park it in one of the hoop barns. I think BJ is dumping a little bit of corn. One of the trucks only had like four, two or three hundred bushel on it, I think. He's gonna dump that, and then I think he was gonna go home. Then I'm going to vomitos myself. Early night tonight. Now that harvest's over, we have a yearly tradition around here. We started last year. <laughs> it's time for the shot. Yeah, good news, I got bad news. It all evaporated. There's no cups. Uh, That's the good news and the bad news. Yeah. Take the cap off that foam. Right. Yeah. You filling it up, are you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, why not? Land your camera, man. Right, we had to film this. Did get a 12 pack for a shooter? How much did we drop? Oh, not much. I was hoping someone dropped it and it all fell out. Ah, uh, hold on. There's got to be something here. Wash this down. There's a bunch of lemonade down there. All right, land point to camera per. So, Mr. Bushel Billy gave us this last year. This is moonshine made with decalb corn, apparently. It sat in here all year last year, and we decided we'd take a swig of it. Oh God! After harvest was over, and that was, we decided we'd do that every year until it was gone. Pretty sure this is like a centerpiece base or something for a yeah, right from the wedding. It is. That's a big shot. It's a hell of a shot. <laughs> God, side effects may include death. If we go blind. I like the story Bill gave us this, the other day about where he got this stuff. Yeah. A little you, warehouse in the middle of Dayton. Cheers. Mm. We're supposed to like clank. Uh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, that's my butt. <laughs> uh, here's all the bean dust. Good stuff, huh? God, it burns my lips. <sighs> Woo! I'm, I'm good. Rachel, make you slap your grandkids. Dad? My <laughs> children. <laughs> I think that was a Pappy Brown saying. There's how Dad's celebrating with a root beer bar. I'm the smart one, that's right. Can't beat him. Look at that. Jeez. Look at him. Look at him go. Oh, God. That's fine. Third on the floor, we'll get it. <laughs> oh, ma'am. The maid will pick it up. What do you think? It's getting, getting fat. He heard we were handing out belly warmers in here. Yeah, getting fat. He's putting on weight for winter. Yeah. So I forgot to film an outro to this video watching everybody thanks for tagging along to our, through our 2022 harvest season even though dad tried to say 2023 there at the end if you guys caught that but do us a favor check out the links in our descriptions if you want any brown farms or brian's farm videos merchandise and you want it by christmas i would suggest ordering sooner rather than later uh, to get guaranteed and uh thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one